the only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. This sin will stop you from getting to heaven. Self-righteousness. Romans chapter 10 verse 3 through 4. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, in going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Paul lamented about the self-righteousness of the Jews, knowing that self-righteousness depicts arrogance to the grace of God. The Jews establish their own righteousness and arrogantly reject the righteousness which is by the faith in Christ Jesus. Self-righteousness is sin because by the deeds of the law shall no man be justified. The law existed before Christ came to the world. If all that we needed to be saved is the law, then the coming of Christ is needless. You see, we cannot discuss self-righteousness without talking about the law. Why? Because the righteousness which is sought through the fulfillment of the law is actually what births self-righteousness. Several references in the Bible prove that self-righteousness does not justify anyone and it will hinder people from getting to heaven. What several people do not actually realize or what they fail to acknowledge is that the righteousness of God which is by faith does not acquire the human efforts that they put into self-righteousness. Anywhere in the scripture where the subject matter of self-righteousness is discussed, we would see clearly that it does not save anyone. When a person rejects the work of Christ to establish his own righteousness, such person has made the gift of God so light. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 through 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not for ourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So our salvation does not come through works of self-righteousness. Rather, it is the gift of God which we receive through faith and the finished works of Christ. Anyone who is too proud to accept that Christ paid for his or her salvation cannot enter into heaven. If we can get to heaven through self-righteousness, would there have been need for Christ to come in the flesh and suffer such great persecution for our sake? Jesus told a parable about self-righteousness and its consequences. The parable goes as following. Luke chapter 18 verse 9 through 14. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. The Pharisee began to tell God about the things he does not do and how good he is. I am not like other people. Robbers, evildoers, adulterers, he came with the spirit of pride and self-righteousness. The tax collector, on the other hand, was justified because he didn't make any excuses. He humbly approached the throne of God and prayed for mercy, and mercy in the sense of atoning sacrifice. He didn't say, God be merciful to me, I'm not a Pharisee. He didn't say, God be merciful to me, a holy man. He didn't say, God be merciful to me, I'm only human. He didn't say, God be merciful to me, I'll try to do better. He simply prayed, God be merciful to me, a sinner. That's all. Humility will take you a long way with God. The Pharisee portrayed his pride before God because of his self-righteousness, and God resisted him but gave grace to the publican who humbled himself. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Self-righteousness is one of the evilest things one can allow in his or her life. Like the Pharisees, it makes you paint yourself as white before God. 
It makes you begin to tell God the things you do not practice. It makes you say you're good while you try to hide your evil side. Meanwhile, God sees your heart. He knows what you do and the motive behind all your words and actions. Self-righteousness gives people false assurance of heaven. People with self-righteousness will even expect to go to heaven out of their own merit. They go as far as telling God what they don't do. Lord, you see I don't fornicate. I don't get drunk. So Lord, I am righteous. The Pharisees in Jesus' time had issues with him because he associated them with sinners. The Pharisees see themselves as holy and that they have nothing to do with people that are not in their class. They think that is what qualifies people to get to heaven. But the more they do these things, the further they get from heaven. Self-righteousness does not take people to heaven. In fact, God is irritated by people who practice it. If practicing the law and being a moralist is all you need to make heaven, then there is no need for Christ to have died for our sins. This does not mean that we are not to be righteous. This teaching is not in any way encouraging anyone to live in sin. As the Bible says, we cannot continue in sin and say that grace should abound. Grace does not make people to sin. It rather prevents them from sinning. But the idea is that we must not rely on our righteousness. In another scenario, in Mark chapter 10, a rich man came to Jesus and asked what he would do to inherit eternal life. Jesus began with him from the basic by asking him to go and obey the law. The rich man confidently replied that he had been keeping the law since he was a youth. I suppose that Jesus would applaud him, but verse chapter 21 says, Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away, grieved, for he had great possessions. A man that has self-righteousness will always lack something that will disqualify him from getting to heaven. Although the man kept the law, but he was still unqualified, the best that self-righteousness granted him was closeness to heaven, but not entrance to heaven. No one will ever enter heaven based on human strength or the works he or she did. If self-righteousness will take anyone to heaven, a lot of moralists who do not believe in Christ will get there before several Christians. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 verse 20, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. The reason Jesus said this is that the righteousness of the Pharisees is self-righteousness, the one they sought through their own strength. In fact, self-righteousness births hypocrisy, as we observe in the lives of several Pharisees. There is no righteousness that can take us to heaven other than that which Christ imputed on us. You can only enter heaven by putting on the righteousness of Christ. Self-righteousness will send you to hell. Moreover, why should we seek righteousness when Christ has made provision for us through his precious blood? The balance of this message is that we are saved by grace through faith in the finished works of Christ. Therefore, we receive the righteousness of God by believing in Christ. Our faith should come before our works. We are saved by faith, not by works. And we are saved by faith to do good works. Therefore, our good works should complement the righteousness of faith which we receive in Christ. James chapter 2 verse 18 and 26. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith and I have works. Shew me thy faith without thy works, and I will shew thee my faith by my works. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. The righteousness of Christ that is imputed on us is to be complemented by our good works. Our good works is not what saved us. Rather, it is the complement of our faith. Our righteousness is of Christ. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves.
boasters, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.